Hello everybody, it's your boy Master Jedi with another video and today I'm going to be reviewing Rich Brian's new project, The Sailor. And it's also the second album as well. But uh yeah, if you guys don't know who Rich Brian is, let me give you a little bit of backstory. Rich Brian started off as a comedian, you know, a Viner and a uh, Vine obviously. But uh, yeah, he started doing like, these comedy videos, these like funny skits. I never heard of Rich Brian and Vine before. I've just never heard about him. But uh yeah, anyway he releases a first single in 2016 which is that stick and that stick blew up <laughs> yeah it just went completely viral you know it's just literally him and pink polo shirt just with liquor just doing a lot of things basically like the gen like the generic trap things it was just supposed to be like a, like a funny song i guess you could say like kind of like mimicking trap but at the same time actually spitting bars and flows and actually talking about i think china or, or indonesia wherever he's from but uh yeah um it just talking about everything, you know, rapping, all that stuff, a trap. And then he uh, made his album last year, which is Amen, which is a banger. But not, ex like, it was a good album, don't get me wrong, but it wasn't like 9 out of 10 or something like that. It was like a decent 7 or 8, a decent, somewhat, like in that area, like some something in that region. But uh, yeah, I mean, I've always liked Rich Brian, and he's also signed to the 88 Rising label. Artists like Joji are there. And a lot of other artists that you probably don't recognize, but they have so much shine, guys. You need, you need to check them out. But uh, yeah, for real, I mean, let's get into this review. I have a lot of things to say about the sailor. Like, the sailor is like... It blew my mind, bro. It just literally blew my mind. It's like Rich Brian says to finally put some glasses on. And he viewed, like, Tyler's perspective of creativity. This man went full long in his production budget. This man went like, just insane, bro. Like, it, it was insane. Like, you guys probably remember like our entire creator, this Igor or Flower Boy, which it was a big departure from his older projects like Cherry Bomb or Wolf, which was, he was like kind of like immature. And it was like, and now like things just changed. Like he was like now mature. He's like rapping about, you know, actual things and all that stuff. But yeah, in this album, I think he's like rapping more about how he started off, like with the foreign things when he's coming to the US and all that stuff. And he's just like basically talking about his perspective, you know, like about how he was like an immigrant, like when he came to the United States and how he was in Indonesia, wherever he lived, to be honest. I don't know exactly where he lived, but uh, yeah, wherever he came from and how he came here and all that stuff. And also like his struggles of how it was to become an immigrant that apparently he was a 14 years old and he got homeschooled and all that stuff and he didn't have that many friends. I think yeah something it went something along like that but uh, yeah there's a lot of great tracks like this the sailor was such a good track like the first track basically where he's just talking about so many things mostly the, uh, the immigration thing but I like how like there's a lot of beat switch in this album like it's like going full sickle mode I don't want to compare it to sickle mode because like sickle mode is like a song and all that stuff yeah we know it has a lot like three beat switch or something but I think that Rich Brian has entered, as I was saying, the creative process about Tyler, the creator. He finally put on some glasses, and he's like, just viewed something in a whole different level. I'm not saying that Rich Brian wasn't creative in the Amen. I just think that Amen was a more, like, trap approach, generic trap approach. But this one is, like, a more creative approach. Like, it has hip-hop, like, boom-bap hip-hop, um, songs like Kids, or I was saying he raps about immigration and all that stuff when, when he came here and, like... And how he, you know, how it was to basically be an immigrant, all that stuff. But uh, yeah, he's just talking about a lot of the immigration stuff. And so I was saying, songs like Kids were so exhilarating, so good. Like the beats, which is like the first, which just goes slow, and then the horns and the, the trumpets, whatever there is, and the instruments there, bro. It was just so cool. It, it has so much power, and momentum, and how it just we have punchlines and all that stuff. I just like. Like, how he raps about things and all that stuff. And also, How Can I Never Get Yellow, which was the first single off of this album, which surprised, I'm pretty sure, everybody who listened to Rich Brian. Because Yellow was a huge departure from what we're used to from Rich Brian, which Rich Brian is like a more chill, you know, like, trap generic track. Because we're mostly used to that. I was mostly used to that. But he did a complete switch up. And he went for a more like creative tone, like a more orchestral tone. Like I'm gonna keep repeating this. The immigration thing is like all about the, in this album, but mostly like in Yellow, you know, you see like different types of of like parts in, in the song, which then like comes like the violins and all that stuff, and then like 
slow and he's just, just really depressed at the, at the first start and then just builds up to this rap and it's like oh my god bro it's just it's just so good you need to hear this album you need to hear that song because i remember when i listened to that song my mind was completely blown i had didn't repeat more than 10 times actually i was just blown away of how creative like rich brian can be as an artist and i'm like jesus christ i have never seen rich brian like this before like it just blew my mind you know and yes Rich Brian still has silly bars, like silly lines, which I cannot say here because then YouTube will completely demonetize this video if it ever gets monetized. But uh, yeah, it still has this humor, which is pretty funny. Things that one of the aspects that I really like about Rich Brian that not only does he deliver like sick punch lines and all that stuff, and so good bars and lines and all that stuff, he's always funny. You know what I'm trying to say? He has like that funny aspect and all that stuff. Like hidden in the album, like he just puts it there and just like, like you might think like, oh, am I gonna take it serious or not? But you can take it serious. Like it's just like a song. Like it has like this like funny line, like ridiculous line, but you still like it. And it's still a banger, and everybody's gonna like it. So uh yeah, I mean songs like I'm gonna say this rapakaka, something like that. Basically, what an AK or an Uzi would sound like. Basically, it's so good because he's just like and rapping and all, and that's like this background like ad libs that are like high pitch you know and it just sounded at first when you're listening to it it sounds like it's a parody or something but it just grows into you like it's a more like instrumental like, in part you know like the more you listen to it the more you get really used to it like at first you might think it's like ridiculous but then you just like when the song progresses it just gets so good and it just gets better and better and better as his flow starts to get unique, there's like some slow parts and all that stuff. And then yeah, talking about slow, one of my favorite songs about this album is Slow Down Turtle. Jesus Christ, that song was fire! It was like, I need to compare, I'm sorry, but I need to compare it to Sickle Mode. This song had like at least five or four beat switches, but he nailed perfectly. Like first, you know, beat was like such like a chill, it's not like a summer beat, I guess you could say, like doo doo. It, it was like a summer beat and you think i don't know if he sampled or if he pitched his voice or something because they're like this like nice sinking part in the beginning then it completely like just switches up to like a faster beat a faster pace you know and he's rapping a lot of stuff and then it just stops and it goes slow and then there's this beat switch which then everything starts getting to get like this is gonna happen like something's like somebody's gonna mess you up or something like they take Keith or something's gonna happen literally everything just starts going super fast like it's the matrix or something and like this guy starts rapping like Eminem which I think he did I think he kind of cheated in one part because like, when he's rapping like really fast which you can tell like, the pitch getting higher I think he probably like some production or something probably did that but if he actually like rap extremely fast like that I'll give him props to this man this man is a genius and this man is just a goat <laughs> I gotta give him props for that because if he actually like rapped that fast, I can process that. But I think he probably pitches pushes anything. But that doesn't mean the song is bad. Like he managed it pretty well. Like he just nailed that part. Then our beat switch was gets even harder with these strong 808s and kicks and all that stuff. And I was like, oh my god, I'm digging this part. But I mean, I wish that part was longer. I like that part anyway. I think it was a little bit too short. It should have been a little bit longer. But hey, then it switches to like a completely like slow, you know, pace and all that stuff. But either way, I completely like that song. I um, had it in a repeat. But uh, yeah, there's other songs like Curious, which that was a good song. I like Curious, you know, where he's discussing about, you know, all these things, like dumb things that he's done in the past. Like there's a lot of lines here, which are like pretty funny. Like, which is like when I was 14, I thought uh, Doritos, were, like say, nachos or Doritos or like Italian food or something. I mean, that was like a pretty funny line. I'm going to lie. So bar. <laughs> But anyway, he explains the dumb things that he's done and basically as I was saying, like talking about immigration, talking about his past and all that stuff. And uh, yeah, just so many things that happen in that song. And also songs like Vaxin or Vaxin. I don't know. I don't know how to say that word for some reason. But yeah, he mostly talked about his relationship struggles. So he has somebody that basically this girl, I, I broke up with somebody. And then he's like, for some reason, blaming it on Rich Brian or something. And he's like, what the heck, man? It's what? <laughs> But yeah, she gets mad over him and he's like, why are you mad over me? I try to comfort you, you know, I try to do all these things for you. Like, why are you mad? You know, it was like a short track, but I still really enjoyed it. It was like a smooth, like, I guess you could say like chill um, song, I guess you could say. And Bill is still decent. I still like it. I still mess with it. And Drive Safe. Oh boy, I like that song so much. I mean, I like one of the elements you can notice from this album as well. Like he's using more instruments, like guitars. Like guitars, I think the instrument was the most... Use instrument 
in this album. Like, there's so many songs where he uses the guitars and he's managed so well. And Drive Safe, you know, when he talks about basically like this girl that he was with and then he breaks up and all that stuff and he misses her. And like, what about the good times and all that stuff? And just, I just miss you and I hope you're you're okay, basically. I mean, it's a pretty good message. It's like a pretty wonderful message. I mean, I like it. I, I like the message he had behind the songs. And also, probably one song that literally got me off guard was Confetti. Jesus Christ, that song catched me off guard, man. Because it was like a slow part. I thought Joji was singing that first uh, part. Because it's like slow. And then, boom, just like a switch up toward the 808s. And like, I think he did a little bit of auto tune. And I guess, like, at first I was like, a little bit skeptical. I was like, I don't like this part. But then that flow that he does with the like, hi hats and all, it was like a little bit like, you know, that flow. I was like, oh my god, this is fire. But uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of these songs are just so good, man. Yeah, there's a song called 100 Degrees, which I think felt more like a pop song. I'm gonna lie, it was like a more happy tone pop style. I liked it, but it depends on what mood I'm feeling. If it's if I'm like happy or something positive, and stuff, I'll put that in. But like, if I'm not, I might not play that. It's still a good song. But uh, yeah, a lot of these tracks in this album are just so decent. A lot of them are my favorite. I mean, like this summer and this year, 2019 overall, so far has been pretty good. Igor, we got so many projects basically. And I know I just said one album. We got Zoo, got a lot of projects, all right? I wanna make this video more dedicated in the sailor, not Igor, because I did a review already for that in Zoo as well. But uh, yeah, basically this album, if you're thinking like, is it a good album? I'm gonna look at you right now. I'm gonna say, what do you think? <laughs> this album is obviously so good. Like this should be numb. Okay, my phone just got spammed. <laughs> but yeah, this album should definitely be nominated for album of the year or best rap album of the year. Like, I'm not even joking. I'm not even being sarcastic or whatever. This album should definitely be nominated for Grammys or whatever. Um, Yeah, what do I give this album in a scale of 1 to 10, bro? I would give it a complete 9 out of 10, bro. Like, like a 9 to a 10. I'm not even joking at this point. But uh, yeah, I would definitely give this a 9 out of 10. I would definitely recommend you. I would highly recommend you guys listening to this album. Play it, bro. Streaming all that stuff. This guy is so underrated. You guys don't know how underrated this guy is. Like, he deserves way more attention. You know, like the punchlines, the bars, everything. In the creative process, everything was in this album. It was just so good. I highly recommend you guys to listen to it. So uh, yeah, make sure to subscribe to my channel, like my video, leave a comment down below on what you guys want me to do, what content you want me to post, like what album do you want me to cover next. I was thinking maybe doing a review on YB and Cordae's album. I haven't listened to that because I've been just so like sucked into this album. Like I've listened to this album at least six or five times, like the complete album. That's how much I like this album. But uh, yeah, let me know what you guys want me to do next. Uh, as I was saying, leave a like comment down below share this with anybody share this on twitter share this with everything bro like for real tell your friends about me and uh yeah also check out my beats channel jrmr beats i know i have posted nothing for like three weeks i checked it today in my stats and all and i was like okay, okay. but uh yeah <laughs> anyway um i'm gonna start posting probably today tomorrow it doesn't matter i'm gonna be posting soon and we've been doing actually pretty well. Like, this guys, my goal right now is to get that channel to 40, to 40 subs or 50 subs. Please, I know we can do that, guys. And also, please, get this channel to 160. Because we only need one sub. We need one sub left for 160. And uh, yeah, please help me fulfill my goal, guys. And yes, see you guys next time. Peace out.